Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I want to talk to you about a new contract that Rocket Lab just got and some upcoming catalysts that are very different from what people think. So Neutron does not need to fly this year in order to in order for it to be a major catalyst uh, for the company. So we're going to go over this in this video. Uh, it's going to be amazing, so please make sure you hit the like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and let's go. By the way, today Rocket Lab did something that I didn't know it was capable of doing, and we had a nice large green candle today. It did come back a little, but we take any win we can get on this stock. <laughs> it's been brutal. Uh, so the new contract that they got was uh, announced on Twitter. It's one electron rocket for 14.49 uh, million dollars. That's a very expensive one. Usually these uh, electron rockets are 8.1 million uh, in price. So I'm curious why it's priced so expensive. It says we're honored to be selected by the Space Force uh, and the USS. Uh, Space Systems Command, I believe that's what the SSC stands for, to launch the STPS-30 uh, mission. Um, this is a dedicated electron mission from LC-2 in Virginia Wallops. Uh, deploying a spacecraft to demonstrate a sustained very low Earth orbit uh, flight. The mission will be our third for uh, the Space Force, further strengthening Electron's uh, position as the leading small launch Vehicle delivering reliable and responsive launch to the DOD. It's a very small contract, to be honest, and it's just nice to see. We have had, I don't want to say bad news, but the stock has been hammered and it seemed to react very good for this price. And each contract, uh, you know, strengthens the ties between, you know, the uh, Space Force and, and Rocket Lab, and it's just good to see. And this is a test. Uh, project and if this test works maybe it leads to future new contracts so this was a very very small thing now let's go on to something much bigger uh, so every now and then you know this this team guy puts out he usually puts out very good tweets but this one is unbelievably good and I kind of knew all this data before, but I didn't have it articulated so nice in my head. So basically Neutron, even though if it doesn't fly in 2024, can be a major, major catalyst and a source of good news uh, for the stock. And I have to explain it via his uh, tweet. By the way, please make sure you follow him if you like Rocket Lab Team underscore X94, fantastic account to follow. Uh, rocket Lab remainder of 2024 is literally going to be a rocket ride in terms of stock catalysts. We just hope it, this year doesn't end in a rod, <laughs> a rapid unscheduled disassembly. That's what SpaceX calls their failures. News of a successful Archimedes engine hot fire will get the stock back into the $4 territory. More importantly, the main reason besides Neutron on the pad in 2024, why Rocket Lab is so aggressively pushing for a successful hot fire is the NSSL Phase 3 Lane 1. And that's a mouth, mouthful. Um, and I, I want to explain it to you because not everybody understands uh, what this contract is. So this is the actual Space System Command's uh, media release. So the National Space Security uh, Space Launch is a series of rocket launches and it has certain phases. So the phase only means uh, a date interval between the launches. So phase two actually completed, I believe in 2022, it was like from 2019 to 2022. I might be completely off on this date. And the new phase is basically from 2024 to like 2030. And here is the press release. So um, our phase three strategy uh, our phase three strategy provides a maximum opportunity for emerging and experienced launch services, launch service providers like to participate in the NSSL program and provide our nation with the most robust launch capability we have ever possessed. By the end of the phase three, we will have at least three providers fully capable of launching all NSSL requirement, as well as a full complement of launch service providers using 
uh, systems designed for more risk tolerant space vehicles launching to traditionally commercial orbits. So there is a clear intention from the Space Force to broaden and diversify uh, the space launch providing. That's for national security purposes. Uh, it also drives down the costs. And what they have done is the phase three, which is all the launches from 2024 to 2030, it was divided up in two lanes. And lane one is the like the risk tolerant assets. So that's, I guess, simple assets, doesn't cost so much and they need to go in regular orbits. And then you have the absolutely mission critical ones that I guess cost a lot of money and they need to go into very special orbits. So on the lane two, they are they only have, initially it was two companies, SpaceX and ULA, and then I guess Daddy Bezos sued and complained and whatever, so uh, um, Blue Origin was also included as a highly trusted, uh, you know, can take very risky missions. I Don't ask me how, they have never had any rocket to orbit, but they're supposed to be a uh, highly trusted, very capable launch provider. We don't go there, but the point is that Phase uh, lane one uh, is for any launch provider. So anybody can, the only thing that they have to do is they have to have a credible path to launch a vehicle. They have had to have a successful launch um, and that's it. And they qualify. So naturally there was a uh, rocket lab, Firefly, you know, a lot of these companies that, that you know, who wanted to be part of this program. And what would happen is if nobody qualifies, so let's say Rocket Lab fails with Neutron, you know, every other company fails with their test, then all of lane one would just go to the lane two providers. So naturally, when you started to hear this FUD that uh, Neutron is impossible for this year, naturally, probably it was coming from maybe Blue Origin. I don't think SpaceX plays dirty, maybe ULA because they... It's in their interest for the lane one people to fail because then the lane two people get all the launches. So this was just important to uh, clear out. So in their October 5, 2023 communication, Space Systems Command said, phase three proposals are due by December 15, 2023 with award for lane one base IDIQ planned for spring 2024. So if you are like me and you don't know all these acronyms by heart, I had to look up what the heck is IDIQ. And it's basically a US, it's a way how the US federal government contracts different services. And it's an abbreviation that means indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity. So I guess it's a contract where you give them a price that we launch rocket for 8.1 million. And then that's the price that you have. And then they say, we will order five, maybe 15. It's an indefinite quantity and indefinite quality. I don't know how that applies here, but that's what the abbreviation stands for. Towards the end of Q2, we know if um, Space Systems Command considers Lockheed Labs Neutron to have qualified as a base IDIQ contractor. This solely depends on whether the, space, the SSC assesses that Neutron has a credible path to flight in 2024. The wording is intentionally vague in order to allow SSS procurement officers flexibility in determining if launch vehicles are eligible. Successful hot fire before the end of Q2 would add significant weight to Rocket Lab's 2024 green light schedule. In this scenario, I think it is very likely that they will be on-ramped as a base IDIQ contractor end of May or June. So what he is saying here in human language is that you only needed to have a credible path. The language is very, very weak. According to some Rocket Lab people, they have even coordinated with SSC on how to exactly word this thing because SSC really wants newcomers. Uh, they don't want a that SpaceX gets a monopoly. Obviously, ULA is very, very expensive. Uh, so this is their way of really opening up space commercially is that they are supporting other uh, companies. And if we have the successful space flight, sorry, the successful Archimedes uh, test, even if you think that the chance is very, very unlikely that they will 
fly in 2024, but there is a credible path. They can onboard Rocket Lab and Neutron into the system in May and June, and that would be super amazing. So becoming an IDIQ contractor, Google it means essentially that, that the SSC is onboarding Rocket Lab into the NSSL program and that they are on standby to receive task orders at a later date. Mission awards, caution, only after the Neutron has a successful flight, uh, the SCC will allocate task orders mission as part of the IDIQ contract. Lane 1 currently has 30 high margin missions available for the order period. Ah, here it is. From between 2025 to 2029. So I said 24 to 30. I wasn't that off. So 25 to 29. SSC has every incentive to ramp Rocket Lab if reasonably eligible, since otherwise all 2025 missions, not all 30, will go to Lane 2 providers. And that is against the purpose of the program, which fosters increased competition. So this is the part that I wasn't taking so much into consideration. So the SSC was coordinating with Rocket Lab how to word this thing so Rocket Lab can be eligible. The whole program is made with the viewpoint of having more space competition. And the thing is, we already know that all other competitors have failed uh, to enter, to be onboarded this year. So Rocket Lab is the only one that has the chance to be onboarded. And if they don't manage to onboard, then this government entity that wants to foster competition, wants to diversify, the whole purpose of this program it was to diversify the space launches into many providers. They would have to give all the 2025 launches to ULA, SpaceX, and Blue Origin. And they clearly don't want to do that. That goes against the whole purpose of this program. However, in my honest opinion, Rocket Lab needs to do their part and execute on the Archimedes engine hot fire in Q2. In addition, a successful hot fire will also allow for signing of neutron commercial launch contracts in uh, the second half of the year. To summarize, not financial advice, in my opinion, we are either going to double from today's price before the end of 2024, if the above plays out, or we are going to stick to the current or lower range if the Archimedes hot fire is significantly delayed or not successful. Like I said, it will be a rocket ride in 2024. So I completely agree with this. I maybe don't agree with... So definitely the hot fire test is going to be insanely bullish. And it will, even if Neutron doesn't fly this year, we just have a credible path to fly. It will open the door to new contract announcements. They will be onboarded and it will be a lot of fanfare uh, around this. And if they need additional finances or whatever, it will be really, really easy to handle because, you know, the, the risk is basically negated with having like them being a provider in uh, lane one. But what I don't agree with is we have been trading in a range of, you know, down to $3.7 and up to sometimes $5.50, sometimes to $8. We are at the bottom end of this range. And I believe that we deserve to go higher from this, even if there is a delay in Archimedes, even if there's a major delay with Neutron, we are just too cheap where the stock is at right now. So, for additional contacts, investors thinking, well, Neutron in 2024 is not going to happen. This will not go through, uh, misses the entire point. If they just on-ramp to the IDIQ contract in Q2, then they can also launch Neutron in Q1, Q2 in 2025, and they are able to get missions awarded. So this is... Uh, so the point is to on ramp in 2024, not necessarily launch in 2024. Very, very well said. Again, make sure you follow this account. This was the whole video. Um, please let me know in the comments if you got value out of it. And if you want to support the channel, you can join, become a YouTube member, or you can see the Patreon link. You get access to uh, my models and you know we can chat there, but it's mostly to support the channel. So thank you so much. See you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.